Today, we're reviewing the desktop held Einstein printer. The, the American, American muscle, muscle car. car. Let's get into it. Manufactured in California and built for speed, this printer changed how we think about same day printing. But like an American muscle car, it's a little rough around the edges. The history here is important. Desktop Metal purchased Envision Tech for $300 million back in 2021. And from that merger came the Einstein printer. This is the first release from that company. And I was personally involved with the development of this printer. And I knew early on that it was gonna jumpstart chair-side printing and truly propel the industry forward. We were one of the first offices to have an Einstein and have extensive experience using the printer over the past 18 months, including dentures, all on X, veneers, and bike guards. The printer has been a workhorse for us. In this review, we will rank key areas that we feel are important when considering a printer. The rankings are on a scale from one to five, with five being the very best and one being the very worst. The Einstein reminds us of an American muscle car, built for speed, but not a very well-refined experience. Powered by a factory calibrated 385 nanometer 1080p DLP projector, this system is better than it really should be on paper. We get better results from this 1080p projector than many of our 4K printers that we have in use. This printer implements heat and closed loop technology with four sensors that constantly talk to the printer providing feedback, allowing for rapid printing. RP Slicer allows full control of the essentials with some automation such as automatic nesting using a feature called Autopilot. We find the software is adequate, but at the same time can be very difficult for team members to use and understand all the features. The automatic supports always need adjustments, and this requires knowledge from the user on the fundamentals of 3D printing support and peel forces. We find with the right settings, the supports generated are extremely easy to peel. One thing that makes this software very complicated and hard to use is that it does not ship with support and resin profiles, and you have to go online and download them. We've also run into issues with the license repeatedly expiring when we boot up the slicer software. The desktop health single basin wash unit uses a mechanical propeller to mix the IPA to printed parts. We found this unit to be very sensitive with propeller failure occurring often. We dislike that it does not have two separate wash containers, one for clean and one for dirty alcohol. It also is very difficult to service and clean requiring several hours of part removal. Luckily, the Einstein printer is paired with an auto flash, the gold standard in post print curing fast enough to enable single visit chair side workflows with 10 minute cure times for Flexera and under five minutes for bite appliance and surgical guides. The auto flash has two flash bulbs at the bottom, which are operated with frequency of 10 flashes per second in work mode. When flashing, the bulbs generate a highly intense light radiation, which ranges from 300 to 700 nanometers of wavelength. We really love the broad spectrum cure as studies show that it enables a higher degree of methacryl conversion of the resin. This definitely is one of my favorite curing units and with optional nitrogen hookup, it can't be beat. Support at Desktop Health has always been helpful, but there are a couple of low lights that I think that we need to cover. We had to replace the four sensors in one of our printers, which required the printer to be sent back, and this took several weeks. One issue is the heating elements blow dust onto the inside of the glass screen, making it nearly impossible to service without having to take the machine apart. We really dislike that a RFID card needs to be placed on the printer for it to print. This feature is unnecessary and annoying, leading to disruptions in workflows. And last but not least, the price of this printer has doubled over the past year, making it much more costly than most of its competitors. Okay, let's get into the ratings. Much like an American muscle car, the Einstein is probably not a good pick for your first car. This is not a printer we would recommend for first time users. It's an advanced printer that is best left for somebody who has printing experience and it has a steep learning curve. With that said though, they have done some pretty good things to make this a little bit easier. Like they calibrate it from the factory. And there's a lot of online tutorials that you can watch if you're motivated to do so. We rank this a three out of five on easy use. This printer is large and has an industrial look to it. When combined with the wash and cure units, it is the Frankenstein of printers with some of the elements just aesthetically not going together. 
With the exception of the fully integrated prime print, this printer has the largest footprint of all the printers we've tested. We rank this a three and a half out of five for footprint. When this printer was first introduced, it promised speed and it delivered. Speed is where the Einstein excels. The speed is for the entire and quite large build plate, meaning that we can consistently get two arches of all NX prosthetics in under 20 minutes or two full arches of crown and bridge provisionals in under 18 minutes. This is absolutely essential for those offices doing a lot of all NX and full mouth reconstructions and want same day temps. The Einstein gets a 4.5 out of 5 for print speed, but we feel like with the introduction of a small and more rapid build plate, it could actually be a 5. It's clear Desktop Pilt takes print quality seriously. The printer consistently prints all onyx with passive fits and perfect screw channels. Margins are impeccable and we love that we can print ultra thin veneers down to 150 microns thick, something many printers struggle with. We've never had an issue with print quality, so let's spend a couple minutes and go through the benchmarks that we use on all the printers that we're testing. The first benchmark that we're going to talk about is this 3D printing torture test. This is indeed one of the hardest things that we've ever printed on any machine, and the Einstein performed amazingly. The lattice structure cube is held up by 300 micron thick supports. That is the ultimate test of a peel force on a printer. If this cube breaks off, we know that there's some issues and this performed flawlessly. Next, we have the 3D printed crown. It is a perfect fitting crown with really nice anatomy. We were really impressed with the quality of this crown. We also love to print veneers as a torture test because we know that's one of the applications that doctors are going to use chair side. This veneer was printed at about 200 microns thick, which it printed the margin perfectly, no holes, really performed well. The next benchmark that we like to test is a screw retained crown. And so this prints with a true abutment tie base that has an anti-rotation notch printed perfectly with the perfect fit. The last benchmark is a smile mock-up, uh, which also is about 150 microns thick. It printed a little thin right here, but other than that, pretty much perfect. We rank quality a four and a half out of five. And we feel that if it had a little bit better of an XY resolution, because right now it's currently in about 99 microns, it could be perfect. It's all about the resins. And Flexera Smile was one of the first of the next generation print resins that were aesthetic, strong, not brittle, and could print fast. However, it is radiolucent and it has under 50% filler particles, which means it does not qualify as a ceramic resin under the new ADA code. The Flexera Denture Base is absolutely beautiful, but it has to be kept quite thick at three millimeters to avoid fracture. We find it is very, very sensitive to post-processing. SmileGuard is a good bite resin and Keystone Soft material is also available on this printer. Overall, they have a great resin profile with mostly all of them manufactured by Desktop Health, but they lack robust third-party resin support and users are at the mercy of a relatively slow resin development pipeline. We rank them a 3.5 out of 5 on resin. The first case that we're going to discuss is a complete upper denture case with a lower partial denture and some crowns. This patient presented like this in, in this scenario after having some ill-fitting prosthetics and, and some decay with an old denture with a reverse smile line. We did a quick light body wash of the denture. We scanned the edentulous ridges in the lower and we also prepped the front teeth for full coverage. We designed this case in ExoCAD using um, the patient's 3D face scans and smile design software, a complete maxillary split file denture with a lower split file partial and some prosthetics. Here you can see that we're festooning this case, um, making sure that the anatomy is appropriate for this particular patient. And what's really nice about this is we have complete control over the entire workflow. This particular case, we're gonna print the teeth separate and the base separate using Flexera resins. And as you can see, the patient is just super excited. And what's really cool, we have a one year follow up now and the prosthetic still looks amazing. So the next case is an only case, which is my favorite indication for 3D printing chair side in dentistry. So we did a quick prep, took about 10 minutes. Here we are doing the design in ExoCAD. Took less than a minute to get a perfect design with the absolute amazing contours and perfect contacts. Uh, no more filling with matrix bands, trying to get everything perfect intraorally. Sent this thing to the printer. We printed it vertically to ensure that we had perfectly crisp margins. Printed out in about 15 minutes, bonded it in, you know, perfect restoration, perfect fit.
Overall, this printer has so much potential. If they would just open up to more third-party resins and have software that ships with it that actually comes with resin profiles and support structures preloaded, they could be doing so much better. Yeah, if you think about this like a muscle car, if you know how to work a stick shift, you're absolutely gonna be able to exploit that muscle car. With the Einstein, there is definitely technical know-how that's necessary to be able to unleash the power of the machine. And we know they're working hard to correct some of the hardware issues that we faced early on with this machine, but the printer has nearly doubled in price since its launch. Overall, we rank this at 3.8 out of five. Up next, the Asiga Max.